with a grotesque whine of scraping metal, he opened the hatch and ducked through, leaving it cracked. Clanging onto the rust-patched metal that made up the floor, he wiped the crusted bits off his hand. Dull, glowing streaks of orange light filtered down through the other walkways. The steady thrum of the working parts within the tower reverberated throughout the metal under his feet. Although the upper levels were dense with heat, it was very chilled here, making him grateful he kept his sweater. The right wall was a mass of black pipes and tubes, worn beyond possible repair. Tears were abound on the rubber and metal, some ripped open, though none of this mattered, for it was now a condemned part of the tower. All uses these pipes once had has been rerouted to another sector, and these shut off. Well, time to waste time. Maybe my welder will fuck up and I'll have to fix it for blowing its use on this shit. Plugging his ears to escape the noise that would very quickly annoy the hell out of him, he had a walk through the entire area. Starting to count the tears, he lost track after about 200. Not care where to start, he flipped open a toolbox, lifting the welder's helmet, pushed the strand of hair out of his face before pulling it off. Unlatching his welding tool, he randomly chose a rip to work on. Blinding light hissed and spewed a blue flame from the torch, so it blasted into the metal, melting it shut. Sparks flickered around, dissipating in thin air for a second. While he worked, he whistled a familiar tune even though the blast of the torch drowned it out. Working steady for an hour, he twisted the knob, shutting off his tool. Flicking his helmet up, he assessed his progress. Before going back to work, he felt a hovering force on his back, like someone was watching. Pretending not to notice, he calmly and slowly removed the plugs from his ears and then his helmet, setting them down. Pretending to yawn and stretch, he quickly shifted around, darting his eyes towards the other end of the sector. Rousing it, he frowned, bending down without removing his glare. He rummaged through his box until he grasped the cold steel of his trusty wrench. Hefting in his iron grip, he crept slowly towards the open pipes on the other wall. With a silence he could rarely muster, he approached, ready to bash whatever it could be. For some reason, he suddenly remembered his co-workers gossiping about a ghost that sometimes haunted the tower. Malcolm spat at the thought, not one to ever entertain thoughts of superstition. He cursed himself for even remembering such a dumb story at all. Even more so when goosebumps began to rise on his arms despite what he was wearing. Holding his breath, he stepped right alongside one of the pipes and peeked in. Nothing. Moving on to the next, he raised the wrench high and quickly looked into it. Nothing either. Checking a couple more, he started to doubt the feeling, exhaling loud. Of course there was nothing. Turning away, a sudden squeak sounded and he shot his head over the last pipe. With a ferocious gaze, he peered down at the being inside the pipe. Bright, amber cat eyes stared back at him, mortified. Without a second's delay, Malcolm jerked his hand down and lifted the being by the first thing he could grab. The being was very light. Malcolm pulled it up so he could see it better, and froze as he realized what it was, dropping his wrench. In his hand was a small Vashari boy, trembling, his faded brown hair hanging in and around his oval face. His overcast gray skin was splotched in dirt, and his clothes were tatters. Weakly, he tried to squirm, all four arms moving pathetically to force Malcolm to drop him. However, after a moment, he stopped and went limp, arms hanging down. Mouth agape, he let out gentle whimpers. Malcolm lowered the boy down onto the ground, scooting back with all his might. The Bashari balled up, covering his innocent face. Eyes half open, the boy just watched Malcolm. Weep. Without thinking, Malcolm removed his sweater and knelt down, throwing it over the boy's shoulders. He had not trouble forcing his front arms out of the sweaters. Malcolm's mind went blank as he picked up on the Bashari, who did little to combat him, pressed his palm and curled fingers against his face. 
Gently holding him in both arms, Malcolm ignored his jewel box and headed for the hatch. Don't worry, kid. I got you. Hey guys, thank you guys for listening to that amazing, wonderful story created by Raz here. This is his Patreon page. Uh, if you want him to create more stories, please consider supporting him on Patreon. His wonderful rewards. He's just an amazing author, writer. He's just, all his stories are original. The story was a teaser, and if you want to read more of the story, uh, please become one of Raz's Patreon and you can continue on the series there. You guys are wonderful. Raz, thank you again so much for letting us use your amazing story. Stay beautiful, my freaks. Bye.